Good morning on this fine uh, Monday morning here in Branson. Um, I am just a huge uh, metal fan and I really love all things heavy metal. Uh, it was the era where I started playing uh, the guitar and uh, was just fascinated um, and inspired by these guys that were were coming out and just seemed like from nowhere um, at times and uh, was just you know floored with uh, the, the the body of knowledge and I could always tell a good player from somebody who was very um, mediocre they were just getting by on some very limited things maybe they learned in the beginning of their their playing and it seemed to fit into the song um, that they were writing at the time so I've put together a top 10 list of who I think the greatest 80s heavy metal guitar players of all time and believe it or not three of those guitar players were under the tutelage of Ozzy Osbourne who in a very abstract way probably had his most drugged out decade um, in the 80s uh, but you know the guy could write he was he was uh, he understood marketing or at least Sharon did and uh, um, he knew how to attract um, great guitar players um, it was always rumored too that George Lynch actually had auditioned for Ozzy at one time and was on the payroll and then that just never came to fruition um, you know lots of up-and-coming guitar players ended up actually at Ozzy's door so um, I'm glad they went on to do what they were gonna do and uh, you know sorry that it didn't work out but uh, let me start with the top 10 I'm gonna start backwards uh, so we can work our way down to the greatest metal guitar players of all time and number 10 is actually CC DeVille and he's number 10 because he he really doesn't carry as much weight as all the other um, guitar players but I think he brought something to the table. I mean, as far as um, having massive amounts of money to buy very flashy, nice um, guitars. And he was flashy himself. He had a crazy vibrato. And uh, he, uh, you know, not to mention the hair and the stiletto boots or whatever uh, they were wearing. Um, but, you know, he got heavy metal, glam metal kind of out there in front of everybody. And without him... Uh, playing his very simplistic solos, um, you know, it was an aspect of metal that I think would not have gotten out there and inspired a lot of players. He was also crazy on the whammy bar, um, but you know, for him, it was about the songs, and uh, that in the end, that's what it's all about. I mean, if it's not about the songs, you've got no platform to play your solo, which is a good uh, mark of a great um, player is the song comes first and then the solo so anyway number 10 is uh, CC DeVille number 9 is Zach Wilde he came he kinda came what 86 kind of in the back end of uh, Ozzy but uh, he was there and the guy could shred and uh, I just recently heard his <coughs> excuse me his demo the other day and I was floored at how good that demo was and how he had was really just using a, a guitar, uh, a, a rhythm guitar, and a lead guitar, and he was doing some harmony, uh, you know, some harmonizing. Even back for '86, this guy had some equipment, and he was working out of his house, I guess, and he was like, "I'm going to make it, and this is going to be my plateau and and uh, or platform." And he did. So he came out and was just very tough. Had the long hair and kind of uh, uh, by heavy metal standards, he was definitely a hippie. <laughs> So uh, number nine is uh, Zach Wild, crazy wild vibrato, pentatonic riffs. Uh, he could play, uh, he could do chicken picking. Um, the you know the barometer of Aussie guitar players was always, can they play Mr. Crowley? And uh, uh, when uh, Zach came out, you know he put his own stamp on that song live, and um, uh, just amazing, you know, just amazing player. And he had big shoes to fill and. I'm sure uh, he expected some rotten eggs to be thrown at him, um, which what could anybody do about that? You know, Randy had passed away, but really, the expectation was that Randy was going to be with Ozzy for good, and and uh, that wasn't the case. So number nine is uh, Zach Wild. Number eight is a guy that I was very impressed with coming up. Uh, the vibrato was there, the songs were definitely there. Uh, this band was known for their touring rat, uh, Warren D. Martini, 
Uh, he had the snakeskin guitars. I mean, the guy could just play, and he was just right out of high school, considered kind of a prodigy, and uh, the contrast in the band with the other guitar player was just amazing because the other guy was more of a rhythm. <coughs> Robin Crosby was more of a rhythm player, but Martini worked in there quite well, and uh, uh, to me, considered definitely one of the um, guitar heroes. Um, so number eight is uh, Warren D. Martini. Um, number seven is um, Joe Satriani. Um, just amazing guitar player. Uh, can do so much um, for just enhancing kind of around metal and influencing guitar players to do crazy stuff um, on the guitar. Uh, you know, not of his earth. Not of this earth was one of his first albums, but Surfing with the Alien was the one that really put him. Um, on the map. I learned pretty much most of that whole album when I started playing. Just an amazing uh, album. Uh, Lords of Karma, Always With Me, Always With You, Satch Boogie, and not really the standard kind of metal songs, but definitely metal influenced with all the overdrives and the turbo boosters and all that good stuff. Number six is uh, George Lynch. Amazing, amazing uh, vibrato, uh, song smithing, uh, many uh, number one hits, but just didn't seem to have the endurance to go the full mile with a singer that Don Dawkins that he didn't really want to, which rhymes with rocking, which he really didn't want to deal with for long periods of time. So he started the Lynch Mob. Uh, another couple of uh, two or three great albums and uh, just amazing player with some of the juiciest vibrato I've ever heard. You know, Alone Again is an amazing solo. Um, and the whole song's in E, so that might be one for you to uh, to go and learn. So again, George Lynch, number six. Number five is uh, the man himself, the Fury, um, Ingve Malmsteen. And uh, really wrote from kind of an out there kind of perspective, you know, evil eye and now your ships are burned, ha ha, you know, and far beyond the sun. And this very driven classical influence uh, and kind of the moniker of heavy metal music where they write about uh, the Vikings and, and he has a song, I Am the Vi I Am a Viking. Um, you know, just crazy lyrics and, and uh, demonic voices like in Disciples of Hell. But um, Excuse me, I've got a cold today. And um, just an amazing guitar player. I mean, brought technique to the forefront front and way past Richie Blackmore and all those guys. I mean, just amazing, juicy riffs and arpeggios and and I've got a couple of videos out there where I show you how to play some Ingve Malmsteen so just amazing um anyway he's number 5 number 4 is um Edward Van Halen and um I I think Eddie you know um just did a lot to kind of influence around heavy metal guitar and you know just wrote great songs and I mean that's what it was uh, um, all about you know um, and I, I think a lot of people miss the boat and they say well Eddie's not heavy metal but he, he definitely spawned um, you know the movement and um, I just think that's that's what's so so great about it is that he influenced heavy metal and a lot of people don't consider him heavy metal um, number three is uh, Reb Beach from uh, Winger and um, Reb was just a smooth player he brought tapping back into the forefront had a lot of great um, guitars was a great songwriter was very much hair metal slash you know flash and uh, Kip Winger you know I guess they were a good combination but throughout the, the years I think Reb's ended up back in Dokken and in different bands. Uh, the last two are from actually Ozzy um, incarnations. Um, Jakey e. Lee who is amazing, still amazing today. And you know he came on board after Randy and, and uh, I'm sure he had some pretty nasty signs on the road but um, what could people do? I mean Randy had a, a fear of flying and he went up in the plane and and there you go. I mean uh, he wanted to overcome his fears and, and I respect that. So Jakey e. Lee, you know, um, Bark at the Moon, Ultimate Sin, amazing album as far as rhythm playing, um, pyrotechnics, um, you know, with the, 
you know, Jake refused to to use a whammy bar, so he would work around. Uh, he would say, okay, you know, I don't have a whammy bar. What else can I do? And he would do bends behind the nut. He would do stretches, ungodly uh, stretches that, that most people couldn't even emulate, uh, speed picking. Uh, there was some tapping involved, you know, harmonics, and uh, um, just an amazing, inventive, creative player, and uh, went on to form Badlands, which I guess is his main band today, and then did solo albums of Fine Peak Mist, and there's just a lot of great stuff out there you can you can find and finally the 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 man the the heavy metal master the guy that brought it all in and formed it all together Randy Rhodes I mean some of his overdubs if you'll listen to tonight Diary of a Madman uh, Blizz you know go listen to all of Blizzard of Oz which had like Crazy Train on it Mr Crowley um, this guy had chops and he could even play crazy uh, flamenco you know classical guitar and uh, I don't think his plans or intentions were to stay um, with Ozzy but man uh, you know the guitars this guy had and uh, the flash and was originally in Quiet Riot before Ozzy but I don't think that was a great um, fit for him I think it was time for him to move on and kind of be the highlight and he could share the stage with Ozzy and Ozzy seemed to be okay with that you know because he was an amazing brilliant guitarist and I think when Ozzy uh, found Randy he was thinking of kind of hanging up the hat and uh, Randy brought so much to the table I can remember buying Guitar World issue that had Randy on the the cover and then there would be a Guitar for the Practice Musician issue where he'd have the the Les Paul those are all worth like crazy amounts of money so number one on this 10 list is the master Randy Rhodes and that's my top 10 heavy metal guitar players of the 80s of all time. Thanks for listening.